Hello and thank you for watching. In every game, the search for meta and progress brings players towards a similar point. As a person who's developed depression in an attempt to bring an off-meta pick to the forefront, I've decided to bend to the demands of hard mode and cure my depression by developing this click build. It does nothing truly special, it is the run-of-the-mill default setup, but it has seen me pushing through 14 systems in this current experimental branch. And, well, now you're seeing 48 hours later, me pushing through system 16. Had I been patient enough for the streams, this would have been a possibility. Whether or not it's worth it, that's up for debate. In any case, what has truly brought this all together and made it work successfully is simply knowledge and experience. This is the cornerstone of your progress in Clicker Heroes 2 as you will learn the systems and multipliers. So I will hopefully impart some knowledge unto you so that you can judge your own builds and hopefully set you on a proper path to progress whether you choose hard or casual once this goes live. Now, I can't say how effective this would be in the current state of live. There is a huge emphasis on speed in the live version, and I believe the first systems are more difficult in that version than in this, or it's the item scaling that is different. I don't know. Something has made it easier to push forward in the current experimental compared to the current live. So you may not be able to see as much success with this setup if you are attempting to play this with the version that has the transcendence modes. There is also a rework of Ethereals, which likely changes how builds progress. For now, they're not a massive impact on the overall damage, just two and a half times multiplier. Uh, where I'm at right now, and whether the rework buffs or nerfs them is still up in the air. So without further ado, and no more warning labels, let's slap a danger sign on this build's high damage potential and check out what makes it all come together. So first off, looking at the skills themselves, you should find the big clicks and huge clicks combo as the first combo you'll be using. This is the bread and butter of any click build, and what carries this thing so far? You're going to be using up energy to deal significantly more damage with a single hit. On top of that, there's also a few skills which consume mana to add more damage on top of the combo, which is big click and huge click. These skills are mana crit and power search. The mana consumption of these two is pretty substantial though. These aren't going to be skills which are used on cooldown early on. They will be reserved for the boss encounters at the start, before Hecaton's Echo, and near the end when the duration of Power Surge is long enough and Reload can sustain all the mana costs, you'll be spamming that at every occasion. So with that in mind, I can know what to focus on in the tree when it comes to raw damage. It's going to be Big Click, Huge Click, and power surge. But that's not all that affects your progress. There are also some passive bonuses that you can give to yourself in the form of gold multipliers, haste, item cost reduction, click damage, and criticals. All of these are great and I'll be getting as much as I reasonably can. Though the tricky part about gold will be choosing the kind of gold as not all gold multipliers feed into each other. Uh, you can find more details about that in my fact video, but right now, not getting into the weeds of it, I know that I will be able to make it far enough that chest chance and chest gold are going to be more worthwhile than the monster gold. Although monster gold might come really close, so someone can do the math and say in the comments whether 25% uh, chest chance actually makes it worthwhile at the end. So then the last thing to worry about is the resource management, which brings us to the sustained skills of Energize and Reload. It's with these two skills that you will be able to sustain a Golden Clicks as well as the permanent Power Surge. That being said, the biggest draw in resources will be the Monum. So unless I'm worried about getting Energize to be more efficient, I won't need too many points in there. However, I do do want to get points in reload for two reasons, sustain 
and cooldown reduction, which out of these two nodes gives me a priority of reload for the sustain side of things. Now, don't worry if you run out of mana early on, you'll be reliant on Rufus, the shopkeeper, to fuel your surging addictions, and that is perfectly fine. So all this gives us a total of 13 different node types to prioritize. Uh, yes, that's right. I don't count item nodes as high priority, even though it is still good to gather them when you can. It's just hard to math the actual value on them properly. I mean, how do you determine whether it's worth picking up one more node, which is 50% more damage, but only when that item is your highest damaging item. So I'm pretty sure it's not worth losing out on 30% more damage from something that is constantly active like huge clicks or big clicks or anything of the sort. Either way, a general consensus is that they're worthwhile to keep balanced at the least. Uh, but no need to go too far out of your way to gather X. Now, since I wasn't sure how the resource management would go when it comes to the energy and mana pools, I also went out of my way to grab a couple of those golden nodes. Not positive if it was necessary, but it likely didn't hurt. Same with the energized node, I picked it up along the way, and actually I don't think I regret it too much. So, now comes the fun part. Boom. Staring at the tree for hours to decide what is the most optimal thing to do. Which I'll save you some time with on the first setup. It's debatable whether this is 100% most optimal, but it is what I used. And so here's why. When reviewing the tree and the nodes available, I found that the largest concentration of each of the vital nodes are in the bottom left, top right, and bottom right quadrants. These areas have a large amount of various node types I'm looking for with minimal amount of subpar nodes on the paths to them. So these are the focuses of my pathing. After this, I needed to review a few key pieces of information gives me my requirements on node count. Reload and power surge get desynced at around 40 points of reload. After the 40 points in reload, the cooldown of reload is shorter than power surge. At this point, you'll need to consider preload combo, which I'll talk about later. You can get nearly permanent power surge with the preload quick reload combo. After about 50 points of both reload and sustained power surge. And the fact that my juggernaut, ma the, my juggernaut build made it to system 13, so I know I can get past that point. So I can adjust how many reload and power surge nodes I want to get based off of this maximum. But doing some quick math, I actually estimated clearing system 15 in the same time my jug build cleared system 13, which you can see right now has happened. With that in mind, I wanted to get around 4 reload and sustained power surge nodes from the tree each ascension, so that I reached 40 points by system 10. That is what shaped my tree the most, and as a result, my first tree looked something like this. Yes, yes, I'll add a link in the, the description. I've done a few adjustments since like the very first time I uh, did this tree. So it's a bit different than before. But as you can see, there are at least four of each node of reload and sustained power surge. Also, when looking at the overall stats, I reached close to 15 in each important stat. Click, critical, gold received, haste is a bit low. Um, but it does have diminishing returns, besides the chest gold. That was extremely rare on each branch that I did take, and maybe why monster gold could have rivaled it uh, this early in the game. So when I'm making my trees, I like to try and reach at least 15 of each primary stat. Uh, the closer to 20, the better, actually. So I used this tree, and after a few systems, I had reached a decent amount of energy, uh, considering I'm getting five 
every time, <laughs> or should I say 50? And so I felt that way when I was near the 450 mark, if I remember correctly. And when I had golden clicks running, all the region was handled by reload and energize. Without going too far beyond 200 energy used between the cooldown of reload. I could likely have stopped around 300 to be honest, uh, but this is all new to me. In any case, click builds honestly shouldn't need a substantial amount of energy, but a bit more leeway between the 40% and 60% energy was actually nice for the end when I'm using uh, restraint and release more on that when i get to the flamble i dropped off that path and started to moving towards another area picking up a few more item mods as well as a few more reload nodes and you may be wondering when you see that i have really no flammables at this point why there are none so these do not affect your overall damage uh, you lose these on ascension, and so it's best to avoid as many as possible while the worlds are still under an hour. I'll add an exception with the first two systems. Your stats won't be high enough to carry you through them in such a short time. But at the same time, there aren't a ton which will show their full potential at such an early stage. Unless you take a detour towards discharge. For example so no don't get any flammables until huge click is closer to a four second cooldown at that point when you get huge click discount it will be active full time and so you won't be wasting gold while it's off cooldown maybe you could do it at six seconds it really depends on how you're doing doing with the world progress and most importantly with the automator speed that is the real point to observe and feel for yourself. When to pick these extra flammables will depend on how you feel you're progressing. My personal opinion is to try and maintain worlds at around 45 minutes to an hour uh, after the first few systems. And I'm not saying like the very start of the system, I'm saying like towards the end of the system, they're still at that time. Once you reach the hour mark, drop a few stats and grab another flammable node to compensate. Most of them will double DPS overall, but Hecaton's Echo can usually be considered a 3 to 4 times multiplier when big clicks are no longer enough to kill monsters. Either way, it's a means to be more energy efficient, which can be very important in the first transition run. So this segues nicely into the next section of progression, the flammables you'll be picking up once the progression starts to slow down. I tend to go from the shortest detour to the longest detour, as my initial trees are set up to be as efficient as possible. It's a game of give and take, and I like to take as much as I can from it. So rather than talking about what I give up, I'll go ahead and list the flammables that I've picked up in order of progression. First pickup is Huge Click Discount. It halves the costs of your items, which allows you to gain a new tier of upgrades a little bit sooner. Now I will say gold is a bit finicky in that it's not really a linear progression of damage, but more of a matter of plateaus. You reach a certain multiplier, you gain substantial benefits. Without that sh threshold, it just gets you the item upgrade a bit faster than before. The plateaus are going to be multiples of 10 overall. So one multiplier of two times is just kind of whatever. Uh, next after this is the golden clicks node. It does look like you're doing half the DPS of click storm, but you really don't need that many clicks and multi-click can easily handle all of the clicking you could want. You actually get this for the 2x gold multiplier, which helps. So these two will carry you a really long way. Big clicks will be able to deal a substantial amount of damage and likely be all you need for clearing worlds. And you'll likely reach the point where you have power surge up 50% of the time before needing huge clicks to be the main killer. But once it is, 
you'll need to add Hecaton's Echo. After this, you'll probably have reached the desync on reload and power surge and need to start looking at the preload combo. Though be warned, this severely affects your mana sustain. So if the worlds are still reasonable, you might want to just continue with the desync until you have about 450 uh, mana regen on your reload. So instead, consider killing Frenzy as an alternative. Considering the longest portion of the world clear is spent killing individual monsters in the zone, the buff to your haste will actually cut off 30% of your clear time. I saw my time go from about 45 minutes to 30 minutes the first time I picked it up. Uh, the next one is only recommended when your natural crit chance is relatively low because the bonus is a fixed amount and you can't ever go over 100% crit chance on Sid, and that is critical power surge. This will come at an average of just under 50% increased damage at the end of the run, provided you're near 100% uptime on power surge. So definitely not the strongest thing out there, but it's close and it's something. And by this point, you're likely nearing the end of the run and each ascension is less and less valuable than the rest. So it's time to take the last bit of damage we can and give up on a considerable amount of bonuses. In the top left of the tree, there are a few more valuable nodes for us, two of which are going to require optimizing your automator further by adding a couple of greater than 60% stones. Release doubles your damage when you're under 60% energy, and Restraint, which doubles your gold gained when over 40% energy. While you have Restraint, you won't want to go below 40% energy, so there's two options. Switch to a recovery page when you go under 40% energy, and in this page you won't be using multi-click, or only use multi-click when above the 60% threshold. You'll also need to add the click gem to the 60% stone so that you deplete the energy fast enough for the release bonus to be worthwhile due to you actually gain recovering energy from reload. Now, eventually, you'll want to come up for limitless big clicks and synchrony. It's hard to quantify what these add in damage considering it's going to let you use multi-click more often as well as more big clicks, allowing you to line up more big clicks and huge click combos during the Hecaton Echo count. I'd count the combination of these two as a 2x multiplier. So one without the other doesn't give you a ton of benefit because you're still having to deplete your energy probably a bit too fast. So yeah, that's at least seven different trees. I've only given one because I didn't save all the different versions I've gone through. And you know the kicker though? I'm using yet another version of a tree for this new transcension. Because I don't need as many reload, sustained power surge, mana, or energy nodes now that I've buffed them by a good amount. And I'm going further than that last transcension. So I'll have more of them picked up by the end of it. In any case, hopefully this knowledge is enough to push you into the correct direction and you can use the template provided to success. Just remember to take the time to really pay attention to how many of each node you're getting and how many white nodes you're spending to reach a single gold node. Oh, right. Uh, I forgot to actually tell you the combo for preload. Uh, so... The cooldown on Power Surge and Reload are both pretty long. Doesn't look that long right now because I have so much haste. Um, but what's cool, like really cool early on, is the cooldown reduction on Reload. It affects its own cooldown. So 50% uh, fifty percent reduced cooldown works with itself to make it shorter and shorter each time. Now, as I have said multiple times, there is a desync that happens when you get to that 50% mark. 
And at that point, you'll want to switch over to preload, which is actually half the equation. You'll also want quick reload so that the cooldown of your reload skill is now permanently shorter than the power surge skill. So looking at the Preload skill, it is an absolute half to the cooldown of any skill used immediately after reload. So this cooldown reduction is not affected by the 80% reduced effect on quick reload. So effectively, you have a means to always cut the cooldown of power surge in half as long as you use preload immediately before using power surge. So the easiest way to achieve this is to have a page switch activate when there is no more power surge, which is what I have right here. This switches to a page which only has reload and power surge. Reload will activate off of an always stone or preload equals zero in this. And then power surge should activate only when preload is greater than zero. Once power surge is activated, go back to your DPS and continue as usual. Now, deeper into your playthrough after a few transcensions, you won't even need this combination and will likely be able to use Reload Rampage instead. Now, that one could probably use a few minutes dedicated to itself, so I won't have time to explain it here. Just keep it in mind or once your power surge duration is longer than the cooldown without any of these reload shenanigans. I'll also do a separate video to go over the automator and what I did to make it work effectively throughout the whole progression of the character. So you can look forward to that coming um, soon. In any case, I really hope that this helps to some extent considering this game's progression. There is really no one size fits all guide without going through every single step of every single transcension as different perks will give you different priorities. I mean, kinetic energy just completely changes your priority from being big clicks, huge clicks to being juggernaut, which... Jesus Christ, Juggernaut is complicated to set up <laughs> early on. So take your time, learn the steps, learn the priorities, because I really don't feel like I'm capable of delivering a quality uh, experience of, here's like the entire 250 system guide to every step of what you need to do, especially considering... This is still a beta game and everything is subject to change. I have no idea what the ethereals are going to be. Whatever. If you've made it this far, just take one more second. Click that like button. But mainly thanks for watching and good luck. And maybe check out one of the other videos. Subscribe if you haven't and whatever else people say to do around here. I don't know. Yeah. See ya. Good to bend the. Oh my god, this sentence is so hard. Brings us to the Sassane. Sassane. <laughs> Item cost. So, when reviewing the tree and the nodes. The nodes. <laughs>